Kerala Healthcare, one of India's formidable plays on COVID solutions, has come out as a key beneficiary of the demand for Remdesivir, which has led to a strong operational show for the company in Q2. Now, Kerala posted 13% sales growth led by pharma business, also when you see which witnessed 14.5% sales growth. Now, consumer business, which makes the rest of the top line, was rather muted at 5% growth this time around. Note that the post-acquisition of, say, consumer wellness from Heinz, the company now holds brands such as Complan, Gluconte, Nysil and Sugar Free as well. Now, within the pharma space, the strong performance was visible across geographies, particularly US, where the sales growth was seen at 18%, and that was led by a volume growth and product launches as well. Now, in the case of domestic business, the company posted 11% growth that was led by the uh, chronic portfolio, specialty cluster and traction in the COVID drug, particularly Remdesivir. Now, the company claims that it is offering, uh, its offering for Remdesivir is the most economical and hence it is helping it gain the market share. Now, Cadilla has also gained market share in gynecology, pain management, anti-infectives, anti-diabetic and hormone therapies or portfolio during this quarter alone. Now, the 20% growth in the animal health, which has uh, been helped by the poultry business and the demand for livestock in rural economy, has also been the key highlight in the domestic space in Q2. Further, there was also a sharp uptick in the margins due to the containment of the other expenses this time around. Now, other than Remdesivir in the COVID space, Cadillac is also looking at repurposing some of the drugs, say, Peginterferon, Alpha-2B and Desidustat, which are otherwise used for, say, hepatitis C and chemotherapy-induced anemic um, ailments, respectively, to actually take care of COVID as well. Now, further, Cadilla has completed Phase two clinical trials uh, for pegylated interferon alpha 2b and also that is uh, for the management of covid-19 catalas covid vaccine candidate is also undergoing the phase 2 clinical trials it expects to start the phase 3 trials um, in a couple of months and also anticipates that by march or april the phase 3 data should be really available now the company will partner uh, with an MNC for production and distribution of the vaccine, the entire scale-up of the process can actually take about four to six months from now. Beyond COVID, uh, Catala is also steadily building its injectable biosimilars portfolio, which are the areas to look at for the long term. Catala is working on multiple new chemical entities, of which saroglitazar is uh, of key interest as it is a novel drug and has approvals for multiple emerging markets as well. Now, in the case of biosimilars, Cadilla is focusing on uh, India and uh, emerging markets as well. Now, it has already commercialized 12 biosimilars in uh, India as well. Overall, 21 products are in the pipeline with an addressable market size over there of say about 65 billion US dollars and this includes six new biological entities under development for therapies such as oncology and also nephrology. Now, on the US FDA front, the key near-term challenge is the resolution of the Moraya plant, for which the company had received a US FDA warning letter, and that was back in 2019. Now, Cadilla has already done all the remediation measures and is awaiting the FDA's response on the same. Now, Cadilla is not only credible, uh, Indian pharma company striving for a COVID solution, but on a longer term scale as well, it is an interesting watch in the large cap uh, space, witnessing a significant transformation in the product portfolio uh, space as well. Now, in the next three years, the company plans to launch about 45 injectables, which are expected to generate revenue of say 150 to 200 million dollars at peak. And other comforting part is that as the company has guided for the net debt to equity ratio, um, two has gone under 0.4x. Uh, after reducing net debt by 40% from March 20 levels. Now coming to valuation, the stock has had a decent run up from March lows, but also it is trading at a relatively uh, you know, cheaper price or a discount of 12 times AV to EBITDA in FI22 estimated earnings when you compare it to the other peers. Now given the traction in the complex areas of pharma, the current stock price consolidation that we are seeing, uh, definitely the stock is worth consideration for accumulation and that's for the long term portfolio.